I mean, the win obviously will will help. But how's it feeling right now? It's actually not bad. It. Uh, they did a great job stitching me up, and obviously it missed my eyes. So I um, was glad it didn't get me in a really bad spot, but they did a great job fixing me up. In the moment that it happened, uh, what went through your mind? I was trying to figure out if the puck went in because <laughs> it's sitting pretty close. And then, uh, I don't know, it, obviously I kind of saw the skate coming. and it's just an unlucky play, I think, a little bit unfortunate. But um, like I said, I think the first thought was that I could just see out of the eye, so that was the main thing. I feel like you guys are your teammates were inspired by the fact that uh, <laughs> I don't know maybe I didn't get to watch <laughs> I didn't get to watch much of the end of the first or the start of the second but um, you know it was nice going back to the bench and being up to nothing because it was zero zero when I left so um, I was just kind of had my eyes closed getting stitched up and listening to the guys hooting holler when we scored so it was good what was the final number on the zippers I'm not exactly sure Over 75 though we heard uh, maybe I don't know I'm not sure um, just looking at the play it looks like Chandler Stevenson at one point actually kind of pulls you back up is that how you saw it as well yeah he said uh, I can't remember exactly what he said to me but he's checking in just making sure I was all right because I think he saw the blood right away so yeah he helped me out a little bit was there ever any doubt that you weren't going to go back in uh no no I uh like I said it missed anything important and I had feeling and everything so it was um as long as they stitched me up well, just like they did, it was it was awesome. We were, the team did a great job in there. So, yeah. What do you take of your, the way your team kind of responded there after a scoreless first to get those two quick ones and then kind of take off? Yeah, I thought it was a good first. Like we we had some chances. I know the puck sat in the goal line a few times there. So um, I thought it was a good game for us. We played a complete sixty, and um, you know I've been saying it for a while. I feel like we're peaking at the right time. So it was a good uh, good sixty minutes. Did you see in the third period? Two shots on. Well, how many? I think two shots. Oh, I didn't know. Um, yeah, like I think that was kind of our game plan, just keep putting pucks low and um, you know make them beat us, make them go 200 feet if they're going to do it, and um, got a big kill there. So the guys did a great job. Morgan, you get the sense that uh, this is going to go down in the annals of hockey playoff lore? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought that far yet. I don't, I don't, I don't really think so, but maybe. Yeah. When's the last time that you wore a cage or any of the setup that you wore to me? Uh, I wore it in college, so. Four years ago, maybe. So it wasn't too much of an adjustment. Short flashback. Any? Uh, I mean, you were on the PK. Anything like that? Did it ever cross your mind while you were on the ice that uh, you had to protect yourself somehow? No, no. Like I said, with the cage on, it's pretty hard for anything to happen. So um, you get hopped up on adrenaline. I was obviously really excited for my first playoff game, and um, just kind of went from there. Have you had the chance to check your phone yet? Your phone and no, I texted <laughs> texted my girlfriend and my parents just to make sure that they knew I was okay before I got stitched up, and then. Um, no, I haven't been on my phone. So, thanks, guys. Thanks. A couple shots against the Blue Man. Yeah, it was great. I think. Uh, you know, right from the hop, I think we stuck with our game. Yeah, they had some pushes. They got one there on us, um, but we never wavered. We knew they were going to have some kind of push at some point. Um, very confident group. Our PK was awesome tonight, too, and I think all four lines, you know, 60 contributed tonight for sure. How big was that save, though, that Buck made on how in the early stage of the game when there was still no score? Yeah, I mean, he was he was great all night. He was, uh, we're, we're so confident in him back there, and he gives us confidence up front. Um, he never wavers. Um, you know, we did a good job of kind of limiting their shots tonight, but um, the chances that they, get, they did get, he was uh, he was ready and uh, on top of it. Just wanted to talk about the toughness always of hockey players, though, for Morgan to come back. He said at least 75 stitches. Is that what it was? I didn't hear it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty scary moment. Um, obviously, very happy he's, he's healthy and okay. And um, yeah, he's about as tough as they come. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's about all I can say with that one, sure. How much inspiration did you guys draw from what Morgan went through, Kyle? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, you see a teammate like that come back and battle and, and want to play as much as he, he does. And, you know, he plays a hard game, too. He, he doesn't shy away from anything, especially, uh, yeah, he had a cage on, but he was he had no fear out there after that as well. Did you guys have a sense of what was happening to him or, like, when you came back in intermission uh, after he had disappeared to the dressing room? No, I, t I just heard he got a skate to the face and obviously saw him kind of coming back. I was on the bench, saw him, you know, bleeding pretty good. So um, wasn't really aware of it, but obviously, um, you know, he's healthy now. How we've seen you guys when you've had, you know, key players out 
rise to the occasion so Nikolai isn't able to go tonight and you guys sort of don't miss a beat. Is that just kind of par for the course in the DNA of this team? Yeah, I think that's playoff hockey. You're going to go through. I mean, this is obviously we're playing tough hockey. It's, it takes everything, every every ounce of energy you got, every shift. Um, so there, there's going to be injuries. There's going to be banged up. There's going to be guys that need to need to step up in a role that maybe they're not comfortable with. But that's uh, absolutely the identity of our team. Is uh, is you know we we come in waves, um, no matter who it is out there. What does it mean to put up a five the... spot tonight? Say that again. What does it mean to put up a five spot against Priscilla tonight? Yeah, um, man, I thought we were getting good looks all, all night. I think uh, you know some good good plays off the rush. Ozone, um, you know, obviously we know that guy pretty well. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, a scouting report coming into a guy's mind coming down, uh, knowing where the shoot or not. Um, won't say too much about that, but it was uh, it was good to put up a couple. What did you see on the play? Um, you know, must win games for a little while now, and, um, I just think we've, you know, we've been through a lot in the last 12 months. So uh, adversity-wise, like we've kind of um, seen seen a lot, and um, playing important games on the stretch certainly helps. And um, having some success in those games, you know, to earn a playoff spot, I think was uh, definitely a benefit to our team coming into it. Blake, how impressive was your shutdown effort in that third period, limiting to only one shot at even strength? Yeah, it was, I mean, they obviously scored a big goal there towards the end of the second period and um, gained some momentum. Their crowd was into it, so um, end of the period kind of came at a good time for us and able to reset. And um, yeah, it was good to good to have a good third. How much inspiration you guys draw from what Morgan? Uh, what happened to Morgan in the first period? And the fact that he came back from that. Yeah, I've, I, don't, I don't think anyone doubted he was coming back. I mean, um, he uh, didn't look very pretty, but uh, yeah, you know, he's a college hockey player, he's used to playing with the cage on. So um, it was great first and foremost to, you know, see that it wasn't, you know, hurt too badly. And um, so once we knew that, it was, um, you know, good to see him back on the bench for sure. Well, how many boxes did you guys tick as far as game plan was concerned when you considered dropping the puck until final? Closer? Well, I mean, we, yeah, we played well. It was, uh, um, you know, the way we wanted to play and, um, you know, we know what to expect for game two in the first period. I mean, this team is, you know, probably the best team in the league at home uh, in first period. So, um, start of the next game is going to be, be huge. How are you able to set the tone tonight? Like, we talked a lot about going into the game. Like, I think just we were prepared, uh, you know, for a fast start from them. Um, the other times we played in here this year, you know, they, they buzzed us really early and we had a tough time getting our game going. So, um, we just wanted to try to assert ourselves and be aggressive early on and, um, you know, we got through that first period, uh, you know, feeling good about our game. You guys were breaking the puck out a lot simpler, it seemed like, than them. Was was part of the goal, obviously, clogging the neutral zone to keep them from doing it because they, they, they seemed to struggle throughout. Well, they, they have a really, you know, fast team, you know, and, um, you know, the strength of our team is, uh, you know, we have four lines who can play heavy in the offensive zone and um, where we, you know, when we want to play that game and, and get pucks in and forecheck hard um, and get all four lines involved, uh, yeah, we can um, sort of control the dictate the, the flow of the game. And I think we were committed to that all game tonight. Your thoughts on Helly tonight? Uh, obviously, you know, giving up one goal in a game one on the road that has to set uh, a good standard for you guys moving forward. Yeah, we made some big saves too, uh, especially early on. You know, they had a couple looks, uh, you know, on the on their. Uh, on our penalty kill, um, made some big stops. So, um, wasn't the shot volume he's used to seeing, but um, when he when we needed him, he made some huge saves. What did you see on the play that became Kelly Dubois?
Pierre Luc, uh, how were you guys able to set the tone to yep to me, please, <laughs> in the first period, or especially taking over in the second, maybe early? Let's let's start there. Yeah. Um, well, in the first, um, you know, we knew being in their building, uh, they'd have the fans on their side. Um, we thought we played well. We didn't give them much. And then the second, um, kind of the same thing. We got uh, two opportunities, put two in, and just like that, you're you're up to nothing, and they're chasing the game now. Pierre, you, you guys scored that first goal, and I think there was a shift in the middle, and then you get the tap again to come back out, and you score again. A, were you surprised to to be put back on ice that fast? And did you take a message from the coach that 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 happened? Yeah, I, I think you. Uh, as soon as you get off, you got to be ready to, to get back, whether it's 45 seconds later or five minutes later. Um, you know, we get that tap, we get, well, we get that goal, and then, you know, Bones say, uh, says we're going back out there. Um, you know, whether we score, we, we know we have to keep the momentum on our side, and it was a nice play by wheels, and, um, you know, I was fortunate that the puck came to me, and then, uh, you know, it's a goal, but when you get out there that fast after a goal, the next couple shifts, you just want to get the momentum, so keep the momentum on your side. And I thought we did a good job with that. Um, Adam, the penalty kill kept a, a clean sheet tonight. What was the key to making sure that that worked? Um, yeah, I think, you know, especially that late kill, that's kind of, you know, special teams are usually the difference in, in tight games and, you know, able to get that lead or get that kill, kind of preserve the 3 1 lead. Uh, I, I think, you know, we, Kind of didn't allow their them to break us down, kind of through the box, and you know they, they like to utilize the bumper, um, kind of a lot of slot plays, and you know, I, I think for the most part we, we shut that down. So um, yeah, it, it was it was huge for us to get all three kills tonight. Um, we got to be ready. They're, they're probably going to make some adjustments. I think, especially with that last kill, uh, you know we didn't really give them any looks. We were taking away their line. Their lanes, uh, you know, causing some turnovers. So uh, we'll just have to be ready for some adjustments that they'll probably make. Couldn't help but notice there is a penalty killer with a cage on his helmet. Uh, what, what could you say about Morgan Barron's performance tonight? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it looked like he got attacked by a shark. To be honest, so it, you know, it, it's a scary thing. I think you know we're all so worried about <laughs> the puck crossing the line, and then all of a sudden we, we see a trail of blood basically from the crease all the way to the bench. and You, you don't know what happened. You know, you, you kind of assume a stick, but, you know, the, seeing the replay and, you know, hearing about it in the intermission and, you know, kind of hearing the number of stitches that he was getting, you know, I thought they said 15, not 50 plus. So um, to sit on the table, get stitched up and, you know, miss basically an hour <coughs> of action Sorry. and then come back, I think, you know, it speaks volumes to his heart and, you know, it's tough to come back when you, you sat that long, but you know, he created some great chances for our line. You, you know, getting that bump with Nicky out, and you know, I thought he had a great game. Did you guys know his status? I mean, he said pretty early on, he's like, "Okay, I can see that's a good sign." But did you guys know how he was doing during that time? When he left, I think no one knew how bad the the cut was, or um, you know, generally you're thinking it's a stick, you know, it'll be a couple stitches, you know, maybe stereo strip and he'll be back out there. But as the period goes on, you you don't see him and then you go check on him in the intermission and realize the extent of the damage. Um, but I, I think, you know, the doctors are, do such a great job of closing it up and, you know, protecting it that I think, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a question of if he was going to come back, it was just when. So, um, you know, we were happy to see him back in the second period. Uh, Pierre-Luc, uh, puis-je poser des questions en français pour RDS? Ça va, ça va, oui. Okay. Ouais. Uh, qui étaient les choses plus satisfaisantes de votre victoire? Uh, je pense que, um, tout au long du match, on n'aurait pas donné grand-chose. Um, si tu l'as vu en troisième période, je pense qu'en deux lancés, on a un des meilleurs gardiens de la nationale, donc on sait si on leur donne pas grand-chose, on, on, on va toujours avoir une bonne chance de gagner, mais avec deux lancés, le, le désavantage numérique est incroyable. Um, L'avantage numérique a marqué à la fin. Je pense qu'on a fait beaucoup de bonnes choses à ce soir. Euh, on est content, on est heureux du, de la victoire, mais c'est encore, euh, encore une longue série. Vous avez décrit le jeu de Blake Wheeler qui a mené à ton but. Oui, ouais, mais euh, c'est euh, 
bon back check, je pense, de, de la part des, des gars sous la glace. Euh, J'ai embarqué sur la glace au bon moment. Après ça, je prends la rondelle. Euh, puis euh, je me souviens pas de grand chose après ça. Mais, euh, mais ouais, après, le, après avoir marqué notre, notre premier but, je pense que c'est important que les, les, les 4-5 prochains chiffres, après ça, gardent le momentum de notre côté. Je pense qu'on a fait un, un bon job de ça. Et finalement, as-tu euh, gagné l'inspiration euh, de la blessure de, de Morgan Barron? Ouais, ouais, mais c'est jamais euh, plaisant de voir ça, un, un joueur euh, saigner comme ça. On ne savait pas s'il était correct ou pas. Um, il ressemblait, il ressemblait à un joueur de, de la Ligue de Garage, mais il a joué comme une, un vétéran à soir. Donc, euh, on était très content de le, de le voir en revenir. On était très content de le voir en santé après ça. Il a joué un gros match avec les désavantages numériques, tous les gars hein, du piqué. Um, mais ouais, on, était, on était très fiers et très contents de le voir sur la glace après ça. Un autre, as-tu, euh, 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 il a reçu euh, 75 points de suture. Oui, ouais, on, 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 on plaisantait ensemble, on disait que. C'est un joueur de la LGMQ, donc on s'attendait à ça, mais il n'a pas joué à la LGMQ, mais il vient d'Alfax, fait que, euh, il est tough. Euh, il n'a pas, pas laissé ça changer son, son match. Il est revenu avec une cage, mais il a, joué, il a joué un gros match pour nous autres. Merci. Merci. Rick, uh, what did your group do so well in the third uh, to limit their uh, them to two two uh, shots on goal and to close the game out? Well, we we tried to uh, big part of our game is just pressure the puck here and stay above and not give them a whole lot of time to make plays um, and to try to eliminate them on the rush. They're a very good team on the rush. They like their delays and they look for that second wave. So uh, I thought our forwards did a great job backtracking and. Uh, taking away those guys, and they also did a great job pressuring the puck here. Rick, uh, Kyle, Kyle Connor said uh, when you tapped those guys on the on the shoulder to go back out after they scored their first goal that he had goal legs. Do you believe in goal legs, and is that why you why you tapped them? I like to throw them. Anybody who scores a goal, we do like to go right back with them. 
and say, you know, they're feeling good about themselves. And they only, it was actually, it was a short shift when they scored. Um, but I, we always like to go back with the line that scored. Hey, Rick, um, to, uh, to your right over here. I was just kind of curious, uh, what are your thoughts about the away teams doing so well? I know it's only one game into the best of sevens, but the away um, teams in the Western Conference coming away with wins. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part. I know it's only only one game into the best of seven, but all the um, lower seeded away teams have won their games. I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on yeah in the, we, in the Western I Conference. I think there's a it was like oh three the last time that the Western Conference four road teams won. So um, I you know I, I didn't see a lot of the other games. All I can focus on is our team and our game. But um, we, we we weren't we're not advancing until we win at least one game in here. So we just kept the focus on what we had to do with the game. You know, I'm happy we got game one, but as we talked to the team after every game in a, in a playoff series, every game moving forward gets tougher, and we know uh, the next game is going to be a lot tougher here for us. Rick, uh, obviously Nikolai Ehlers has kind of been a big focus here for a few days. He kind of seemed to think that he was ready to go, but you were – a little more cautionary. So, can you just maybe take us through that decision? Like, was there a setback, or is this just? No, there were, there wasn't necessarily a setback, but nor was there the progress that we had hoped. And we're not going to put a player on the ice uh, that is not a close to at least close to 100 percent, and in put him in a, vul a vulnerable position where he could have a setback. So we made that decision. That was the right call on Nick, and then it'll be the same thing on the Thursday. When we decide what's what's if he, you know, 48 hours a lot can change, um, but we'll certainly make the the right call to protect the player. If he's not where we need him to be, then I know he wants to play, and I think that's what was misleading to everyone. He said, "Yeah, I'm ready. I want to play. I want to play," but medically, he was not ready to play. <clears throat> Rick, talk about that sequence at the end of the second period there. You guys had the two-goal lead, and then you give up the goal to Vegas, and then uh, you're able, even with even on the penalty kill, to uh, kill that off and to uh, go into the intermission there for the uh, before the third period with the lead still there. Yeah, our penalty killers did a great job tonight. We have a ton of respect for their power play, and obviously it's very good. They've got a lot of talent out there, so uh, that was a huge kill, and that certainly gave us momentum going into the third um, especially after they had made it 2-1 with their goal. So give our penalty killers a lot of credit. They did a great job at, at the right time. There's timely kills. That's a timely kill. Jose Valente, Guerrilla Cross Media. Rick, winning a game one on the road, no matter what the series is, is always huge. What do you do to keep the momentum going and keep your guys focused going into game two on Thursday night? Well, we've already talked to them about that. We know we know Thursday night is going to be a lot tougher game than tonight. And, and the game three will be tougher. Game four will be tougher. That's what happens in the playoffs. So uh, we'll reset. We'll come in tomorrow, we'll have a quick practice, and we'll get ready for Thursday. Heading into the game, we talked a lot about, you had said Winnipeg hadn't played his best game against Vegas yet. So what can tonight do for your belief? Clay? Well, we hadn't. And we, you know, the two games we had in here early in the year that I missed because of COVID, we weren't very good. Our goalie was outstanding. Uh, we played better against the, in the game in Winnipeg, but we still ended up losing. But tonight was... The, uh, clearly the best game we've played against them for, for, for the full 60 minutes now. You know, they're a great, great hockey club over there, and they're going to get momentum. So we, I found tonight we did a good job, and when we bent a little bit, we didn't break. And just as important was that, that the next line went out and, and stopped their momentum. So they had a couple of really good shifts they did, and they're going to do that because they're a great hockey club. Um, but I thought the next line that went out to stop that momentum, and that was just as important. You praised the penalty kill. Morgan Barron had a role on that after coming back from what he went through. Yeah. What did you see from him? Uh, listen, he, he came back and he's looking at me. I'm ready. <laughs> I said, well, do, you, do you need a little skate or something here? No, nope, I'm ready to go. And, of course, he went right out and he banged into someone. So, you know, that's, that's Winnipeg Jet Hockey that we're all in. And, uh, and that's a, Morgan's a perfect example of that tonight. Uh, so give him a lot of credit. That takes a lot of courage. You get 55 stitches, but 
whatever the heck it was. And that was a pretty serious cut. Um, so we give him a ton of credit, man, for coming back home and playing. And, that, and that's an inspiration for our players as well. He's on the bench and they're all looking at and they're all saying, you know, great to see you back. And I, I think Morgan's presence coming back from that because they all realized how bad it was that it gave everyone a big boost. Uh, yeah, I did. Actually, I taught, went in after the period to check on him, and uh, the trainers and the doctors said he'll be back. And, I, and from what they tell me, that as soon as he's laying down getting stitched up, he says, i got to get back, i got to get back. So uh, when they told me he was getting dressed and, and he was coming back, I wasn't surprised. Eric, a couple, one, couple of years ago, you coached a team that beat Vegas in the playoffs. How much can you lead on that experience, and does it even play any factor no. at all? It's it's two different. You know, there's two different teams, Winnipeg and Dallas, and it's a different team than they have now. I don't even uh, I don't even go there. Thanks, guys.